So in video games, when they're like crapping these rounds out of their hand, that doesn't work. At least not for me. I can't put five rounds in my palm and just lightning them into the gun. All right, guys, welcome back to Triple F Shooting for part two of the cartridge conversions. Uh, we are going to do this a little bit backward. We're going to kind of speed things up. In part one, we talked mostly about like what a cartridge conversion is and why you'd want one, focusing on the Remington 1858. In this video, we're going to focus on the Richards Mason conversions. Uh, that would have been done by, I believe it was William Mason and... Charles Richards of the Colt Factory. Uh, these revolvers were more, a little bit later in the game than the 1858 conversions. These would have been available in the 1870s and on. Again, we are directly competing with this revolver. This is that top break Smith & Wesson number three first model. So extremely useful cartridge gun while everything else is cap and ball so that's what we're trying to gun against now before we get too much into it with the 1858 revolver and its conversion i actually had an 1858 black powder i could take out sadly enough i don't have an 1851 or an 1860 to show you at least the loading process and everything it's very similar to the 1858 design wise though that gun has a top strap where all of these Colt guns are going to be open top or lacking a top strap across the revolver like an 1873 would have. To give you a glimpse of the actual, or a black powder cap and ball design that is very similar, we have this stinking behemoth that I can't hold out for very long because it weighs like five pounds and I am weak. But this is an 1847 Walker revolver. The only reason I bring it up to show you is you can see that there is no top strap. I have my loading assembly here that's very similar to what you'd see on an 1851 and then sort of similar to an 1860. This one just doesn't have a front latch, but this Hoss is kind of what started all of these Colt open top designs, or at least the first successful one. There was a Colt Patterson. I don't have one of those, but this gives you an idea of what it would look like in its cap and ball configuration with a loading arm and everything like that. So, you got something to compare it against. God, okay. So That's heavy. Just put it on the I, table. Yeah, I probably <laughs> shook the whole thing. Okay. Oh, like I said, we're gonna go a little bit backward, and we're gonna start off with the 1860 Army revolvers. Now, I did most of this information and everything out on the range, so we are going to jump out there and check it out. All right, guys, the next thing that we're gonna look at is an 1860 Army conversion. So you can see from basically here back, minus this piece, is the same thing as an 1860 Army Black Powder Colt revolver. And this would be known as a Richards Mason conversion. Uh, believe that guy worked for Colt at the time. We have, as with every other gun we're talking about today, a multitude of black powder revolvers now that cartridges are available and we're gonna start doing things to convert these over. So this is a whole new unit. I have no uh, loading lever assembly here, just kind of a smooth contour. And then you can see on the other side of the gun, I have my ejector housing. And on this one, I am spring loaded, which is a lot nicer than the 1858. So the other difference you can see here, they would have cut the back of the cylinder off, which is another common theme among all these revolvers and inserted this loading gate ring so that we can shoot the thing with cartridges and get them back out. Now, the other one of these, which I think is a lot cooler looking and a little more fun to gawk at the assembly of, if I can dig it out and not drop things. Okay, well, this one's a lot prettier to me. This is a type two conversion. That's confusing to me because it seems like type one would be the one where they just kind of modified the original frame. But on the Type 2, as you can see here, 
the loading gate assembly, or at least the place where it would be, still exists. But they've machined a single piece for this ejector rod assembly, and it just slots right into where your loading gate would have passed through and gives us that spring-loaded ejector. Notice on the Type 2, I have just a lot of exposed ejector because of the where, where it has to sit on the gun. Uh, but beyond that, same back end of the gun, chop cylinder, loading ring established, and uh, lets me shoot big boy bullets, or at least cartridges anyway. So loading the 1860 Army conversion is very similar to a Colt style 1873. I'm going to half cock, open my loading gate, you can see I have free spinach. And I'm going to get my bullets just like I normally would. I'm going to load one, skip one. Drop these big giant 45 bullets down. And I'm shooting all smokeless because I don't want to have to clean everything up. So you can see I'm dropping on an empty chamber. Kind of neat that you can actually see all the way around very easily because I don't have a top strap. So I can tell I do not have around there ready to fire so i am safe i could drop this gun throw it in the woods whatever i gotta do shoot somebody you know no chance of it going off also before i let you too far away notice that the hammer is notched right there that is actually my rear sight we'll show that probably in some more close-ups but when i aim this gun i have no sights until i cock it so i'll get out here and get a still shot of that but Kind of an interesting thing with the black powder conversion revolvers. Okay, now we're going to load the Type 2, which is going to be very boring because it's exactly the same. This gun, um, not that originals maybe would have been the same way, but this gun is much smoother than the Type 1 conversion for some reason. Probably just the build quality from revolver to revolver, but this one feels a lot slicker. So we'll do the same loading process where I'm going to load one, skip one. And I will set my hammer down on an empty chamber. And you can see the notch in the hammer again where I'm not going to have a rear sight until I cock this gun. Okay, so since we have two of them and they're basically the same gun, I have to shoot them both at the same time. So we're going to shoot them at the targets that are about 10 yards instead of like 5 to make it a little bit of a challenge. But you can see how this does or does not work. Wasn't so bad. All right, we're gonna go back to the table and unload this thing. All right, so the unloading process is just a smidge different than in 1873 because I have this kind of odd little notch I have to clear before I can actually run my ejector rod. Otherwise, it's pretty much a commonplace ejection process. You can see that fighting around that corner is different. This one's timing is a little bit different, so I can't quite run it all the way to the next click. I have to kind of stop halfway in the middle. You can tell by the way I'm handling it, it is not as easy to do as on a 1873. There's one. Let's see if this one goes any better for me. I think this one I can, yeah, this one I can actually go to the click and stop. That one I can't. But you can tell the, uh, ejector is a little bit odd on this one because my ejector is so much closer just by making that turn I actually interface with my cylinder so I can't just leave it up and keep running it back and forth I have to drop it every time make that turn and keep going back and forth so just an oddity not the end of the world but something different all right guys we have an 1851 Navy cartridge conversion. Now the 1851 Navy was originally chambered in 36 caliber black powder. This gun is in 38 special. So we're talking a little bit smaller. These are the rounds I used for competition. So these are only 125 grain. They're not the 158 that most people are seeing with 38 special, but 
a little bit lighter recoiling, uh, a little bit faster bullet. So on the 1851, we have the same grip frame. So that means it's a little shorter. This is actually a, the same profile or much closer to an 1873 single action army. On the 1860s, you have quite a bit more grip length. Um, not sure why they didn't go with that for the 1873, but it is what it is. Uh, on these conversions, at least sold as they are from your birdie, there is no hole where the loading rod would have been. So it looks similar in that kind of squared off shape, but I don't have anywhere where my loading rod could still fit on the gun. Now they do make cartridge conversion revolvers that still have the entire loading rod assembly and everything else, and they just put a loading gate on it back here. So you have the same front end as a black powder, just you have to kind of pop them out with a rod or something. There's no ejector assembly, but this one does have an ejector on it. Very similar to the others where I have to make a turn before I can start ejecting anything. Now, these are the revolvers that I used the few times I was able to compete for cowboy action. These are what I used. So these have an, a little bit better spring kit in them that's very easy to change and they shoot pretty smooth. But again, I have, I'll get kind of close here. We have no rounds in the gun, as you can see. No brass. We'll go around the horn just for giggles. Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, so if it'll focus, you can see the notch and the hammer meets up with that giant brass cone, and those are your sights. So definitely for close range work, especially with the barrel chopped on these, uh, these are only the four and three quarter barrels. The original, well, I can't say the original because a whole lot of different people were doing conversions on their own, but Originally in 1851 would have had that seven or seven and a half inch barrel. So we'd be more out here rather than this little short guy. But for competition, this is much faster out of the holster, a little bit lighter weight, they're fun. So we're gonna go ahead and load them. With the loading process on these, same as we've seen with pretty much any other single action cartridge revolver, I go to half cock, drop my loading gate. Again, these are 38 special. So I'm gonna load one, skip one like we do for cowboy action shooting. These 38s feel tiny compared to those 45 Colts. But lighter recoil, uh, much cheaper to reload. So with Cowboy Action, that is the route that quite a few people go competitively just because it's less expensive, less recoil. So in video games, when they're like crapping these rounds out of their hand, that doesn't work, at least not for me. I can't put five rounds in my palm and just lightning them into the gun. Okay, I forgot to mention I have a different rig on for these guns because they're so much smaller. Uh, my other rig is more for the 45 Colt, the 1873. My top brakes will fit in it. The 1860s will kind of fit into the right holster, not the left. Anyway, these are made specifically for these 1851s are very short length, uh, very basic kind of post-Civil War style where normally they would have had a flap. Most guys would have cut that off and kept the full, very high enclosure. So these aren't the best for competition because I, I can still get in there, but it's not like a wide open holster for me to just get in and out of. They are very flared mouth, so reholstering is super quick. But these are also made for me by uh, J.M. Ross. So another very cool holster set, more for competition. They're a little flashier. I like my other rig better just because it's a little more uh, original, authentic, but these work really well. I really like these. So you can see these are uh, very quick to shoot, light recoiling. You can tell the hammer has been slicked up because I can uh, run that hammer with a lot less pressure than it takes on one that doesn't have a different spring kit in it. But just for funsies, with our second gun, we'll go ahead and shoot traditional cowboy action. So what we're gonna do with this one is my grip is basically gonna hold the trigger down. I'm not gonna actually function the trigger at all. I'm just gonna hold it down in the shooting or my trigger is gonna be done with the left thumb on the hammer. So similar to like what you see in movies where you're just running the hammer like crazy, but I'm gonna do it in an aimed fashion. So here we go. And I don't normally shoot this way, so this might suck. 
So you can see I'm going to get a grip out here. I'm going to cover most of the gun. So my sights are completely covered right now. I'm going to cock the hammer. I can see my sights and let go. <laughs> kind of hard to do up and offset so you can see it real well on camera and that is not how I normally shoot but you can see how you can shoot very quickly people that are good at it can run this thing faster than most semi-autos that's not me I like doing either duelist where I'm firing one gun per hand or gunfighter where they're both up at the same time but very very pretty guns it's one of the things I really really like about these conversions I think they're just gorgeous to look at and definitely unique. Okay, we are back down here, finished up with our shooting and everything, so just kind of final thoughts. Uh, I really, really, really enjoy these conversion revolvers, if you couldn't tell. Uh, these kind of are one of the most interesting, at least in that time period, interesting sets of engineering to me because we're taking old tech that exists in great numbers due to the Civil War and then even civilian purchases, all that. So we have a ton of cap and ball revolvers, relatively speaking, floating around out there. And then overnight, we have brand new large cartridges that we can use. So this is just a really cool example of the ingenuity of these companies to say, okay, we have a lot of this going on. We can convert people's original pieces if they want to bring that back to the factory. A lot of conversions were done by, you know, individual gunsmiths as well. This is not something that was only done by the factory. In fact, it's really interesting when you can find videos of those original pieces done by someone other than the factory. But they took a great deal of time and effort to say, how do we keep up and compete with Smith & Wesson? And this is what you get out of it. You get some very stylish, I think they're absolutely gorgeous, whether you're in the 1851 or the 1860 Type 1 or Type 2, whichever you have, I think these things are absolutely gorgeous. These are some of my favorite guns to shoot because they are just a little bit weird. Uh, they're definitely unique. Not too many revolvers out there, other than the other cap and balls, where you're still using your rear sight as your hammer and everything like that. Um, it's a really cool transitional period in our firearm history. So without going on and on and on, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the content. We will see you in the next episode of Triple F Shooting.